Referencing, a guide to referencing your work using the Harvard referencing method. During this tutorial, I will cover why you need to reference your work, the difference between direct quotes and paraphrasing, the differences between short and long referencing, how to reference from books, your own primary research from things such as questionnaires and focus groups and lectures, and also how to reference from images from social media, the internet and books. So why do we need to reference our work? Referencing is an important part of academic work at degree level and beyond. It puts your work in context, demonstrates the breadth and depth of your research, and most importantly, it acknowledges other people's work. You should reference whenever you use somebody else's idea, whether that be a quote from a book, a website, a focus group, or questionnaire, for example. You should also reference any images you use that you do not belong to, to yourself. So the different ways of referencing. A direct reference is when you quote the exact words of an author or speaker, exactly how it is written or said, written in a book or said within a lecture. Note when you do this, you should use quotation marks at the start and the end of the quote that you use. Or you can paraphrase, which is when you express the meaning of something written or spoken in your own words, often giving it greater meaning. Be aware though, if four or more words are in the same order as the original text, it is considered a direct quote. So you must totally rewrite the um, author's idea in your own words to paraphrase. So anything that you reference needs to be both short and long reference. So a short reference is included in the text. You need to add the short reference in the text right after you have quoted somebody else's work within your report, for example. You then add a long reference in your bibliography in alphabetical order, which can go in your bibliography, which should be placed at the back of your work. So let's take a quick look at an example. Short references in text. If you want to quote the sentence to the right, which I've given you an example here from a book, there are two ways that I could short reference. First, I could do a direct quote where I quote word from word what the author is saying. I have opening and finishing quotation marks here. And at the very end, I add this author's surname followed by a, con a comma, the year that the, um, the, tech, uh, the, the book was published and have those both in brackets followed by a full stop at the end. That's when I'm directly quoting exactly what's written in a book word for word. Or I might want to paraphrase. So I'm reinterpreting that sentence in my own words. And if I'm using the author's surname here, so for example, here I'm putting Hebrero. I know that the book is published, so I put it in brackets as 2015. I don't need to put this author's surname there because I've already um, put it before. So I'm basically saying here that Hebrero suggests that buying and merchandising are the key job roles within the fashion industry. So I'm paraphrasing, rewriting that quote in my own words. So again, once I quote, I literally just put, after I put the um, author's surname, the year in brackets afterwards. So slightly different way of doing it. So remember, you need to short reference in the text within your report right after you've quoted somebody else's work, whether that be a book, um, something from a focus group um, or a lecture or whatever. So remember the short reference in text, you put the author's surname followed by the comma and the year all in brackets, or just use the year if you have paraphrased and use the author's name, for example, when I've put there in the previous one where I've said the author's name suggests whatever it is that they're suggesting. You also need to add the long reference in alphabetical order in a bibliography, which is placed at the end of your report. The long reference looks like this, the author's surname, the year the book was published, the title of the book in italics, the uh, place the book was published, followed by the actual publisher itself. And we'll look at this more detail shortly. And the same pattern applies more or less for everything that you quote. So I'm just gonna look at a few examples in this tutorial to give you an exa example of how to do this in more detail. How to reference quotes from books. There are slightly different rules for referencing books with either one, two, three, or four or more authors. So let's take a quick look. Now I've already given you a reference. Uh, now I've already given you an example of a book with one author where there's the long reference and the short reference. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail. So you start off with the author's surname followed by a comma and their first initial. You then put the year the book was published in brackets. Then you put the title of the book and it's really important that this is an italic text. So this is usually where most students go wrong. They forget to put this piece of text in italic. You then put a comma before putting the place that the book was published and a colon. Finally, then adding the publisher itself. 
So you put that in the bi bibliography at the back of your project. In your project, right where you reference from that book, you put the author's surname followed by a comma and the year the book was published all in brackets. And that is the in-text short reference. So let's have a look at a book that might have two authors. So this is an example here. Similar format, surname, comma, first initial, full stop. Then you put the word and, but followed by the second author surname, comma, and their initial and a full stop. Then it follows the same format. Year the book was published in brackets, the title of the book in italic text, the place the book was published with colon, and then the publisher itself. So when you come to do a short reference of that in the actual text, you do the author surname followed by the word and the second author surname, column, year, all in brackets. So not dissimilar, just making sure you add the word and there when there's two. So when you've got a book with three or more, with three authors, similar format. So there's author's name, comma, first initial full stop, second author's name, comma, in first initial full stop, then you put and, and then the third author surname, comma, first initial full stop. Then it's the same format, year in brackets, title of the publication in italic text, comma, the place that it was published, colon, and the publisher itself. In this instance, you put, the, for the in-text um, citation, you put the author's surnames, the third, before the third one, put and, comma, the year it's published, all in brackets. So you still put all the three surnames of the authors. Now, you're fine for academic books. You can quite often have four or more authors. Now, if you had 15 authors, the short reference wouldn't be so short anymore. So whenever you have four or more authors, we change the format a little bit. The long reference stays the same. You list all the author's surnames, and then before the final one, you add the word and, and then put the last one. Then it's the same formatting year in brackets, title of the publication in italic text, the place it was published, and the publisher. However, where it changes now for anything with four or more authors is you have the first um, author's surname and then you put the text et al, which is really important to put that in italic, and then the year it was published and in brackets. So for any books that have four or more authors, you put the first surname et al, comma, the year it was published all in brackets. And you do that if there was four, five, six, or however many more um, authors basically to keep the short reference as short as possible whereas for three two or one you always just name all the um the, the surnames there so hopefully that clears up referencing books so you also need to reference your own primary research so if you do focus groups questionnaires perhaps you do an interview with somebody or you have an email conversation with someone Anytime you reference somebody else's idea from a questionnaire or a focus group or from an email, you also need to reference this. So why do you have to reference your own primary research if you've created it? Primary research is an essential part of academic work at degree level. It puts your work in context, further demonstrates the breadth and depth of your research, and most importantly, acknowledges your ability to conduct your own theories on a subject, which is essential at degree level and beyond. You should reference whenever you refer to a quote or statistics somebody has provided you in a focus group or questionnaire, for example, or an email, or perhaps even a conversation. Remember, thorough and relevant primary research is essential to forming judgments within your own work, so it's really important you always include it. For example, in um, any of your projects, one of the most important things is understanding different consumers that shop at brands or retailers. To, um, to develop your own consumer profiles. And you do that by doing your own research, usually through focus groups or questionnaires. And you'll quite often need to quote the statistics or perhaps somebody, something, some, something somebody has said within a focus group, and you'll need to reference this to prove and validate that it's the, your own research that you have conducted. So let's take a look at how you do this. So this is an example of somebody's year three bibliography. So they have done their own focus groups, which you can see down here, and questionnaires highlighted here, and they've referenced them in their bibliography. So let's take a look at this in a bit more detail. Referencing your own work from um, focus groups. So if you've done a focus group, you'll need to note down in the bibliography a long reference. So if you've quoted that somebody has perhaps said something in a focus group um, that you've included within your work, you need to reference that. So what do you need to put first? First of all, you need to put your own name and um, the surname and the first name of, um, of yourself, the person who conducted that questionnaire. 
then in brackets the year that it was done the title that you gave that questionnaire and you must put that because it's the title in italic just like you have done for books now what you need to add in with primary research and things is exactly what it was that you've done as primary research so in this instance it's a focus group so these go in brackets here and then you put a comma and you, it's really important that you put the number of participants. This basically tells you how valid it, it, it is. So if you've done a questionnaire with just one participant, somebody might look at it and think, well, that's not going to give you too much information. Whereas if you've got 40 or some um, more, then it's more valid. So you need to note down the amount of um, participants that were within that focus group. You then put down where that took place. Now, if it took place, for example, in London, you could put London. But if it took place online somewhere like Zoom, you can put Zoom here as well. And then finally, you put the date that that focus group took place. Now, when you come to referring in text about the quote that somebody said in that focus group, you put your surname, comma, focus group, comma, the year that it happened, all in brackets. So that's what you do as the short reference. Questionnaires, similar format here. So you put your name who did the questionnaire, the year, the name of the questionnaire. You change here that for the type that, that it is a questionnaire. Again, you put the number of responses and where this survey took place. So in this scenario, it was Survey Monkey. In the same way, you put the surname followed by comma questionnaire, comma the year that it happened, all in brackets. So you can see there's a pattern here forming. It's just being aware of how to do things for books and own primary research. So what about if it was something like an email or perhaps a personal communication over a direct message that you wanted to reference? Perhaps you spoke to um, somebody from who's come in to do a lecture or somebody from industry in an email and they've said something really interesting that you want to put in your own work. Again, you must reference this. So in a similar kind of format, you'd put the um, surname and the position that person holds. So surname the person followed by their, pers um, their initial and the position they hold at a, co at a company. You then put the year in brackets that the, the communication took part um, in. Then you put who the email was to. So in this um, instance, it was somebody that sent an email to our student, Olivia Delfina, a couple of years ago. So it was email to Olivia Delfina. Then you put the date that it actually um, took place on. Same format, in text, short reference. You put the surname of the person um, that you're referencing, the method of communication, this instance, email, and the year all in brackets. So that's how you'd reference something from an email or perhaps, you know, if it wasn't email, you could put FaceTime or perhaps um, Aula Messenger um, or, or Zoom chat, whichever method of communication it may be. Now, finally, well, another thing that you might want to do is um, reference something that somebody said in a lecture, which, again, is really, really important. It shows that you're listening in lectures and most importantly, taking information away. So if you've heard something that somebody said in a lecture or some lecture notes, how do you reference this? So let's take a quick look at this as well. So if you've had a lecturer come in and speak to you and you want to quote from them, same way from books, you put the person who was given the talk in the lecture by giving their surname, comma, and their first initial. The year in brackets that the lecture was presented, the title of the item, so for example, introduction to merchandising lecture notes, then in brackets, the module code or title that it came under. So the main title is actually the module here, whereas the title of the item would be this specific lecture. And it's the module code and title that goes in italic. The place that it um, was delivered. So, for example, in this instance, Ravensbourne University. Then finally, in brackets here, which is slightly different, the date of delivery. Short reference, just the same. Surname followed by the year, all in brackets. So lastly, let's look at image referencing. So why do we have to reference images? When an image belongs to someone else, you need to give them credit for this by referencing them. If you don't do this, you could be um, come up with actually copyright issues, especially with academic work that can be shared. What about if you use your own images? This is quite simple. You can just reference them as author's own. And again, it's really nice to have your own images and work too. But whenever it's somebody else's, we need to reference them. So there's different ways we can obtain images and for different ways we obtain them, there's slightly different ways of um, referencing. Hopefully you can see there's kind of a, a pattern to um, referencing, but let's just go through it in last bit of detail. There is some exceptions to when you have to reference an image that's worth mentioning at this stage. 
WGSN CADs are actually royalty free, which means anybody can use them without basically having to reference them. Once you use them, they're, they're, they essentially belong to you. So that's a big relief, especially if you're developing CADs in the first, second um, year or even in your third year. Other exceptions include royalty free infographics or certain stock images that you've paid for. Thus, once you pay for, they belong to you. So you need to short reference your image beside the image, literally where you have it within your work. For example, over here on the bottom right, I've taken an image from Instagram. I've just referenced it like I would do from, um, uh, like I would do a, a, a smaller quote. Another way I could do this is put figure one and um, place that in the back and then put the long reference. But so it's kind of up to you here. So short reference in the text by the image. If you're going to short referencing it this way, then you can put the surname followed by the year the image was presented. Then the long reference looks like this. So let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. So for social media images, following the same um, formula essentially as before, you put the surname followed by a comma and the first initial of the person that's released that image. The year that it was released, the title of the image. So for example, on Instagram, I just went to the piece of text that they've written about um, and they gave it a title. If there isn't a title here, you can put non-titled. Then you put the platform that you found this image. So for example, in this Instagram, uh, in this instance, even it's Instagram. It could be from Snapchat or wherever. If it's social media, you just put the social media platform it came in. You then have a full stop and write the date that the item was posted, where it's available. So you just put um, copy and paste the actual reference link to that um, image. And then the specific date that it was accessed by you. In the short reference, very simply, you put the surname, comma, 2022. Again, you follow the same format. So if there was two or three authors of a certain image, if that's applicable, then you could format them the same way as that we've talked previously in books. Next, image referencing from a book. You need to short reference beside the image or where you quote the image within your work. For example, you will have a short reference by the image. For example, here you'd have the author surname followed by the year. But for the instance of a book, you'd put the actual page to um, that the image um, uh, was on. Or for example, if I mention the author's name within the work, for example, the image of Audrey Hepburn at Heathrow, Homer shows Hepburn in her iconic miniskirt. Because I put the author surname there, I can just put the year and the page there as a reference. And the long reference will look like this. So similar format as we've spoken about before. So the author's surname followed by their initial, the year in brackets that the publication was printed, the title of the publication in italic. Then you put a full stop followed by the publisher. And then finally, the location. And obviously, we talked about in text, the surname, the year, and specifically, you add the page for a book reference. So how to F reference from a website, similar kind of format here. In text, it's the um, short reference is the surname followed by the year, and then you've got the long reference. So for example, for a website, you'd put the author's surname, initial again, the year it was published in brackets, the title of the article appears in, in italic, the type of image here, for example, that it's an image, you could also put illustration, um, which you can use I double L U S for short fig or photograph or even a logo, perhaps that you've used. So you'd specify the type of image here. Then you put available at and copy the link of the website that you found it. Then in brackets at the very end, you put the date specifically that you accessed this image. And the short reference, as mentioned before, is the author's surname and the year all in brackets. So things to be cautious of. One of the biggest mistakes I see in students' um, image referencing is they reference a whole load of images from Pinterest. Now, Pinterest doesn't actually own any Im images, perhaps apart from its own logo, if you were going to reference it. Any images on there have been pinned by somebody from a, uh, from a different source, for example, a website or social media. And that's what you need to quote there, the original source and the author. So click on the image and it should take you to the original source. If these links are broken, it might not take you to the original source, but you do need to find this, so you might need to source another image. In some instances, you can go on social media or websites, and it might not be clear who the author is, or it might be a company. If it's a company, state the company that owns the, um, the image, for example, the Times magazine. If there is no author or any um, uh, website that you can specify, you'd have to put author unknown. Some further things to be um, uh, aware of. It needs to be clear which image reference relates to which image within your project. It's up to you how you do this. You could short reference beside each image as I've shown you beforehand. 
or you could create a system whereby you apply a number to each um, image whereby like for example figure one figure two but this could be time consuming or as we suggest that might be the easiest way you could scrap uh, screen grab each page of your report place it at the back and add a number for the reference for example here a student screen grabbed each page popped a number on the thumbnail and then put the um the uh the reference right beside it your bibliography and image referencing should be placed at the back of your work lots of students do their referencing in word as they go which is great and very organized however if you later copy and paste this information over to InDesign, be cautious that sometimes the formatting can change and a common error i see happen is the italic part of the text which is underlined below is often um, missing in the bibliography when you've copied and pasted it perhaps because the font doesn't have italic or it hasn't copied over so you will need to check this now, most of your bibliographies aren't so big that this will be very time consuming. You just need to go back and check that all of the titles are still in italic if they're not already done so. So you can find lots of information on Harvard referencing on the Ravensbourne website. It covers much more areas than I've gone across, but everything follows a similar pattern. So if you have any queries, it's a really good place to go and have a look. Furthermore, you can also use websites such as Site for Me, which will do the Harvard's referencing for you by you inputting just certain bits of information. This is totally fine to do so. Once you put in the information, it will come up with an area like this saying exactly where, where your book is, and you can copy the long reference and the short reference to, for ease or peace of mind. This is fine. Whichever way you decide to do, make sure you use the same way throughout so that there is no um, differences between each of your references. The most important thing is using the Harvard referencing, which we require you to do at Ravensbourne, it's important that all your referencing in your bibliography um, and your short referencing follows that pattern. Hope that helps everybody.